I said what I said. I said what I said and I mean what I mean. Right. I'm Sierra. I'm Alicia. And we're about to get into it, y'all. So today we're going to be talking about toxic masculinity and toxic femininity. And toxic relationships and how we as masculine and feminine come together and create toxic ass time bombs. <laughs> okay? How we need to get our together. And so toxic masculinity would be a, a masculine energy that a man possesses that is not healthy and vice versa with the feminine aspect of it. Um, what do you think your uh, take would be on it? I think that it doesn't have any gender role. I think that masculinity and femininity is equivalent to any person who is portraying a masculine or feminine role. So you can be dominant in an aspect or um, I would say more so passive in an aspect or more conforming to an aspect, which would cause you to be more feminine. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just depends on whatever situation that you in within that time frame. Mm -hmm. As far as masculinity, I think that that goes as far as what you do in terms of how you handle situations. Um, if you get the job done physically, you know, what what physical aspects you take on. Mm -hmm. um, women tend to be more in tune with their uh, spirituality than men do their physical physicality mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying yeah and i'm glad you brought up spirituality so from a, a spirituality aspect um what you said is so correct and in every living organism on earth or just everything on earth there is a masculine aspect to it and a feminine aspect to it so every human being has um has masculine traits and feminine traits the um the masculine trait is action you going and you doing and you executing something that you're trying to do the um feminine aspect of it is you thinking and um you um creating that thought in your head so once you create that thought in your head that's the feminine aspect and when you start to um, actually create whatever invention or whatever it is that you thought of in your head that's the physical aspect because you're 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 taking at I'm sorry that's the action aspect of it because you're taking action to create it mm -hmm. so um, really it's 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 something that we all have um, I, I think some people um, like you have males that feel like they have to be total masculine and and they abandon their feminine aspects mm -hmm. of their selves because they may think like it's gay or you know whatever reasons that society teaches you to to not embrace those those feminine aspects of yourself but that's when you create that unbalance you know because mm -hmm. a, a man should have some type of nurturing side to him yeah. as well but he should also be able to go into action when it's time and the same thing for a woman you know there's going to be different times and different places for it um but i i think the the whole core of the toxic masculinity and feminine mas toxic feminine femininity is is not having that balance between the two and i was gonna say that too um i'm glad that you spoke about balance because as a human being you do need that balance between masculine and feminine mm -hmm. you know because that, when you think about the central being of a person is parenting Mm -hmm. You know, so you need that balance from each parent. You need that feminine and that masculine in order to even be able to understand and articulate to that child mm -hmm. originally, you mm -hmm. know, and before the child becomes a child, you know, that baby, you need that masculine feminine balance. Mm -hmm. So how am, how am I able, every, every parent should be able to nurture their child, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it be uh, masculine or feminine, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you should have that in you. You should be able, male or female is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, you should be able to nurture your child, right? Regardless of whether a male or a female is present, right? Whatever you are, you should be able to nurture your child because I 
feel like nurturing is a form of love right and compassion can i portray love towards my child can my child understand that i have a certain level of compassion towards them to where nothing else matters but them and their well-being right you know and i also want to bring up kevin samuels he kevin samuels is a hot topic right now when it comes to the uh, masculine and feminine. Are you familiar with Kevin Samuels? That's a man who gets a lot of backlash for <laughs> disrespecting women. <laughs> right. But I, I like him, though. I actually like him. And I don't agree with everything that he says, but I do like the fact that he triggers people mm -hmm. to get them to think differently and think outside the box and to get some people to, even, real, even myself included, to think, wait a minute, where do I stand in society? Mm -hmm. it's not always about how you feel about yourself but what is it that other people may be thinking about you too because if you are presenting yourself to another being how are they perceiving you, you right know? right that's very important right yeah perception is key how you're presenting yourself is key um but also i feel like knowing thyself is key mm -hmm. because kevin samuels is a perfect example of if you don't know yourself Somebody else is going to figure that out for you. You know, I feel like in, in so certain... Like Bible to me. <laughs> I feel like in, in certain ways, like, I, I, I can't say if his intentions are truly genuine or if mm -hmm. there is, like, some conspiracy behind it. But um, I just looking at it, um, the, the YouTube community and what it has created, it seems like it's almost ha his energy and his presence and his conversation has almost created this, um, you know, battle of the of the sexes, men mm -hmm. versus women. And it's not a competition. We're supposed to work together. And it's supposed to be, a, a you know, a, a collective effort with each other it's where it's not one versus the other. And to me, that in itself is toxic. You know, um, I don't know if that was his intentions, but that from my observation, that's that's what I'm perceiving. Um, I do feel like some people do need hard love. And in some cases, he does have good points. But um, like you said, there are some things that I don't agree with. Like, for example, when he says, and this goes back to if you don't know who you are, somebody will decide that for you. So you better, you, you better, better tell the truth and shame the devil. Get familiar with that, with yourself, <laughs> you know, um, so he'll say, like, you know, um, men, they, they don't care uh, about how much you earn or, um, you know, that's, or maybe that that's not him. I know it's this other, uh, these other two guys, Fresh and Fit. I was I watching them. Him. Yeah, they're, they, they, um, they're friends with Kevin Samuels and they have this show to where they have all of these women that come on and a lot of them are like uh, Instagram Famous. models I'll mm -hmm. say and some of them to try to just put this as nicely as possible are airheads they're not the smartest mm -hmm. people on the show like but they are a lot of very beautiful women that a lot of men um, aspire to get with or would mm -hmm. like to get with their eye candy right and um and they said on the show which I'm assuming that Kevin Sam Samuels may agree with them because they seem like they share very similar views. Um, I heard them say that Fresh and Fit on their show like that. Men do not care if a woman is ambitious or if she's a very high earner because if you're dealing with a high value man that has all of this money that's not um something that they would care about they just are more so concerned with a woman being submissive and letting mm. them be with other women I, I don't think that that's right that um a guy mm. would say that uh, no man no high value man is interested and, and someone who's who, well no someone uh, a high value man being not interested in a woman that's ambitious and that has her own right um money and that is earning six figures why wouldn't he want a man yeah i don't i don't think that every Sounds man doesn't care about that there's a lot of men who, who do. do care about I that i come into a lot of men who come into uh that have come to that conclusion, I believe. Yeah, and it's just a matter of your perspective now. But it also believe this goes to are they high value men though? 
What right. are they sig signifying as high value men? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, what considers you high value? And and one thing that I um did hear Kevin Samuel say is that like, oh, if you're over 30 and you have kids, you know, nobody really wants you. He said if you and, are a certain height and you weigh a certain weight, <laughs> right. no, 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 no. Don't nobody want you. Yeah, and, and I don't think that's true, too. There's a lot of men who cannot have kids or do not want kids, and they would prefer to be with a woman who already has kids, or they may not care about a woman having other kids. I know plenty of people in my family that have birthed kids with women that have already had kids. So that is not something that I don't want women to look at that and think, like, because you're over 30, because you have kids, or because mm -hmm. you're over overweight and this and that right. nobody will want you it's different strokes for different folks everybody right. has their own preference and it's you know somebody out there for everybody i mm -hmm. now what i do agree with him is is people like you can't be a, a rhinestone looking for a diamond you can't be a nickel out here looking for a diamond <laughs> shout out to what's his name kevin samuel no not kevin <laughs> you heard her i don't know what you said Shout out to Life Jennings. Right. <laughs> you can't be a nickel out here looking for a dime. And that's what I want to really delve into. You know, mm -hmm. that's what it really is. Um, that's where the reality sits in with him, with Kevin Samuels. I really appreciate him for being honest about, you know, uh, me and aren't as genuine as we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking at the core for what God created you as. And then... Men are like, yeah, you fine. You look good. I could mm -hmm. smack that ass around. Yeah. And and back to this whole battle of the sexes thing, I feel like a lot of people get caught up in, well, who started it? Well, like, well, women. Women is the problem. Men. Men are a problem. No, we are both we the, are problem. the problem. It's a collective, you know, and as a collective, mm -hmm. we both are the problem. So everybody needs to stop pointing the finger at everyone and, and go back to yourself and say, what can I do to contribute to creating a better reality for, for our environment? So, for example, you know, um, you got a lot of men that say, oh, these women, they're gold diggers and, and they don't care. And they're trying to be men and they're too masculine. From my life observation from being on Earth, as long as I have been on Earth. As a what woman? As a woman outside of that because it's not just a woman what kind of woman are you let's be real you're a black woman mm -hmm. and it gets thrown to the wayside too much mm -hmm. you know that's a whole nother level yeah you know yeah we the things that we deal with mm -hmm. the trauma that we witness yeah the things that we experience yeah we are to be on another level. Right. We have to go about these ways and fend for ourselves. Because mm -hmm. not many people are going to come to aid in our demise. Yeah, you do. I, I do feel like that that is uh, part, of, part it, of it. Part of it that I was going to touch too. Like, you know, um, as far as a black woman, um, I do feel like black women are the less defended people out of everyone because you have other races who do defend their women, uh, defend their women. Um, and I feel like black men do not defend us as much as other races. So that is one thing, you know, us not feeling protected, yeah. you know, um, us not feeling as wanted and desired, us being abandoned. You know, so um, you have a lot of women who pick up these uh, masculine traits yeah. because it's a, a sense of survival. I'm sorry. A survival one of them. technique. You know, like, oh, well, you got some women that um, get with the man, they get dogged out, they want to be with all of these women and not commit. So, as a way of protecting their heart, they say, okay, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be with all of these men. I'm, gonna I'm not going to commit. Because I don't, I don't want to be hurt. You know, that's a survival yeah. technique, a defense mechanism, a defense mechanism, right? And um, you know, you when you're left to fend for yourself and you have a child that you have to raise, 
you know, you have to go into action and to do certain things because you don't have that masculine person in the home or that masculine energy in the mm -hmm. home. So it's a matter of do I fulfill this void or at, do I be helpless and looking for someone to be my captain save a hoe? So you feel like black women don't really have a, an option for balance? I don't That's think, I, I don't, hear. I don't think... Well, I feel like the the lack of balance is a, a chain reaction and a cause mm -hmm. and effect. And it's not even just with the black community. It's like it's becoming yeah. a, a cultural thing yeah, we're at this in point general. with with just society. Yeah. And um, and and when you have a woman that's been scorned so many times, at what point? you know, do, like, at, at some point, some women will say, well, fuck these dudes. I don't, I don't care about these dudes. I'm taking my heart out of it. I'm taking my feelings out of it because his feelings clearly is not in it. I mean, they're clearly saying, fuck these dudes. I'm gonna fuck this bitch. And it's, it's almost like subconsciously when it happens. And then once society has created this, person then you want to demonize her mm -hmm. for for just trying to survive you know and mm -hmm. i'm not saying that men don't have their struggles on why they are how they are you know but as a woman i can talk about a woman perspective more than i could talk about a man perspective so mm -hmm. i just have to go and bring it into that point first and mainly because men don't even talk about what it is that they going through mm -hmm. you know it's like pulling teeth in order to get a man to address what's going on. Uh, but as far as the um, on the on the guy side, because I feel like we talked a lot about the uh, feminine, feminine side, side of it, with the toxic side of, I mean, with the um, masculine side of it, um, there is a big attack against masculinity. We were talking about this earlier. Um, all food is wrapped in plastic. Plastic has. Um, female hormones in it and you would wonder why all of these young boys are fe feeling feminine and and being more feminine you know they're digesting these foods that's absorbing these toxic chemicals and once you are digesting that now you have all of this estrogen in you you also have um, estrogen that's in the Similac you know, and uh, a lot of babies drink Similac you know, and a lot of people have the you have a lot of young boys having these feminine urges at very young ages and they're thinking they're just born this way not knowing it's been systemic at this point i feel like because you know um at some point somebody had to know that it was going to be some type of cause and effect having estrogen in Similac and having all of these uh, uh have wrapping all of this food in plastic but what's really the deal what are we doing wrong you know, um, I learned from critical experiences, condoms are valuable. Laying down with the appropriate person is valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, don't lay down with anybody. Don't lay down with a person who would deny their child. Do not lay down with a man who would think that it's okay to pick and choose when to see their kid. Yeah, and then uh, and when you talk about like gold diggers and women that want to be with men that are high earners. I but wish they, they had have... some gold for me to dig for. <laughs> but they may, like women who want high earners, but they're not high earners themselves. Most women will say, oh, well, you know, that's part of hypergamy. Hypergamy has been around since the beginning mm -hmm. of time, which is basically um, a woman that would marry a man because uh, he was able to provide and a to protect. Ordeal. You know, um, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it, it's 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 nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with being with someone who can um, provide and protect for you. Um, but I I do think like uh, people have turned it into like this um, this toxic mass uh, this toxic femininity sort of thing to where it's like women That's are valuing women, want. women are valuing money. More, more than, than a man than a man and and in some cases that is true you know 
So if you are someone that is into hypergamy, not only do you have to think about the financial stability, but you also have to think about what genes am I passing on to my baby? What genes am I passing on to my baby? They don't lineage? just fade away. And this is what I mean by a high value man. You can't just stop at a person that's high earning. I consider mm. a high value man, well, that somebody I would be proud to pass the genes along to my baby. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff right there because it don't just stop it. Maybe he having a good season, right? Maybe he just came up within the season. And then you figure you want to hop on a bandwagon. But if he ain't had that in him, it ain't been genetically inclined, you know, for him to continuously produce that, then your child probably won't have it either. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been saying a long time. I said, man, I know I got it in me. My daddy yeah. had it in me. He, it was a natural born thing that yeah. not just this season, but in spite of the odds, in spite of what it looked like, I'm going to make something out of nothing regardless yeah. of where I am. Yeah. And I want to say, personally, that's a black gene. Yeah. There's a lot of confusion going on, but the reality is you need that balance. Regardless of what you do, I'm not the judge. I I'm just the messenger. Mm -hmm. You need balance. Yeah. Whatever what it is that you do, you need balance. Yeah, we're not here to indoctrinate you. We're not here to um, think for you. We're not here to pers persuade you on one side of the argument or another. But we're just here to promote critical thinking and for you guys to think about this yourself and to come up with your own uh thought yourself not what i said not what she said not what kevin samuel said not what F fresh and fit said not what anybody said but what is it that you think i said what i said i said what i said and i mean what i mean right i've discovered that men don't even acknowledge what i can only relate to a black woman what we go through mm -hmm. you know um, some weeks ago on social media, I had a man who said, oh, men are like this, black men this. Well, you know, we, we black women suffer through the same thing. And if you ask me, we're at the lower, the lowest of the totem pole mm -hmm. in the eyes of other people. They have no flipping respect for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they feel comfortable disrespecting us. And nobody acknowledges that because what are you? a black woman you know mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that it's valid yeah. it means that you know when you say when you speak up when you say when you assert that dominance when you assert that masculinity within your own right which everybody has that ability to do so then you're wrong you're the black bitter woman you know mm -hmm. i call it the bitter black bitch <laughs> you know they say, oh, she's a bitter black bitch. She's always mad. She's all, no, I'm tired of you fucking with me. Right. I'm tired of you nitpicking. And if you would just, you know, uh, mind your business and let me be me and be great because I am, then we cool. Yeah. You know? Um, but in most circumstances, we don't want no smoke. Mm -hmm. We want to make everything cohesive mm -hmm. and be all hunky dory. Mm -hmm. You know? But because you have a certain level of, it's your tone, it's your pitch, it's your, no, I'm just being me. This mm -hmm. is where I come from. This mm -hmm. is what I do. There's no problem. There's no, there's no backlash when you're being you, mm -hmm. you know? So this is when the balance of masculinity and femininity comes into play. I watched some documentaries. Um, I need to look up the titles, but about, I, I noticed that all around the world, this is going on with black people. It's nothing new. Like, no, it came from, they brought us over here to this side of the world from slavery. And they said, this is how you should behave and you behave that way. And if you don't behave that way, then you'll have consequences. Yeah. And not only did they bring people, it was people that were already here mm -hmm. before them that were native to America that they basically killed and took over their land, you know, yeah. and... I'm superior then. Yeah, it's like... But what's the disconnect with the mother who would prefer to feed their child with something other than their own natural given gift? Right. You know, um, 
the I mean, I realize you don't get it twisted. I understand that some women cannot produce the milk. Some people just prefer not to. Maybe it's painful. But for the person who just chooses not to just because, mm -hmm. it's easier. It's simplistic to give them similar. You know, I just scoop it and go. Yeah. And I think that that same mentality of a woman choosing to give a baby Similac over breast milk. And I'm not talking about a woman who can't produce their own milk. I'm talking about a woman who's perfectly healthy, can do it, but she want to drink, she want to smoke, or she just don't want to have mm. a, a baby tied to her titty all day. Yeah. You know, th to me, like, where are your, I, I don't want to sound very hateful, but you know, I I would like to see a woman priorities being, I want to make sure my baby's healthy. I want to be able to make sure my baby's getting the natural nutrients that it needs. And, mm. um, and that should be in the forefront of people's thinking. And that same way of thinking, I feel like, leads to people aborting their babies. Mm. Now, I'm... There you go. You know, I I there always was not against abortions, but I would like to say, I, I listened to a lady named Angela Staten, and she really, you know, was talking about abortions and all that. And she really changed my mind on abortions. And you have a lot of people that will tell you, like, oh, it's just a seed. It's not really a baby. Child, that's a baby. It's a baby, and they feel it. They feel it when when you're aborting it. Like they, they got eyes. They, in a few weeks, they she she uh, Angela Stan. She uploaded a video on her Instagram. It just recently got taken down, but um, before it got taken down, she had uh, a while back. She had a video that showed a fetus running away from the needle where the doctor was trying to kill it, and then it vacuums out the legs and all this stuff. It's, it was very gruesome, but that's stuff that we need to know because you got a lot of people that make a decision to have an abortion because they feel like, oh, it's just a seed and it's not going to hurt, you know? And then we wonder why the, the Black community is not um, prospering because we're killing our own babies, yeah. you know? And we're not nurturing our own babies. we rather give them this formula that we don't know where it came from and put these this mm -hmm. foreign this foreign these foreign chemicals in our babies' bodies or go to these doctors that would kill our babies and we wonder why we not prospering. We wondering why we walking around here, you know, with not feeling right or things not going right. I've had an abortion too before one time. I'm just gonna put it out there. That's before I knew you know, all the things that I know now when I was younger, I did. And I was one of those people that felt like it was just a seed and that was it, you know, um, and it's no big deal. And I totally regret it. Um, you got a lot of people that's pro-choice, which I believe is you're choosing death because the opposite of pro-life is death. You know, um, you, you those same people, if you were to ask them, well, have you ever had an abortion? I would like to see how many of them people would honestly be honest to really answer the question. Not only that, have you ever murdered anyone? Yeah, and, and on top of that, it's like... Um, the follow-up question to that would be, well, how did you feel afterwards? Did you feel good about it? Mm -hmm. You know, did you feel bad like, about really, it? Really, what did you feel within that moment? Because that's a disconnect from your own personal child. Yeah. That's your child. Yeah. You had a dealing to do with that child. You created that being, and then you're separating yourself from that being. Yeah. You know, that's not... The, the main... Thing. When you go as a woman, especially a black woman, I can't speak for anybody else, but you walk into the doctor's office and they say, oh, well, what do you do for birth control? Well, who said that I right. need this control and birth? This is the pet peeve <laughs> for me when people be like, oh, well, you, I don't believe in taking away a woman's choice. Honey, you still have a choice. You have a right to not have, uh, you have a choice to not have unprotected sex with this person. You have the choice to um, wear a condom. You have the choice to do birth control. You have uh, you have Plan B. You have all of these things before you get to abortion. You have the choice for all of these things. Hold it. Most women I know, most women I know have had abortions multiple times around the clock. Six and seven abortions. How is that even possible? Six and seven abortions. And after you have those many, sometimes you can't even have kids anymore. After that. For those of you who don't know what epigenetics is, it's um, 
genetics that's passed along down from generation to generation. So for example, there was an experiment with mice and um, every time the um, mice would go in this particular area, it would shock them. And, um, and like, let's say if they put cheese, every time they ate cheese, they would get shocked. So, um, as af after you rep repetitively do that over and over again, um, pretty soon the, the, ma the mouse or the rat is going to associate the cheese with being shocked. Mm -hmm. So now it's going, it's not going to do that. It's going to probably be hesitant when it comes to cheese or not like cheese or whatever. So they did an experiment and after they, they created this circumstance for that, let's just say mouse, um, the kids had that same effect that never really went through the actual experiment of them shocking it, mm -hmm. but just from the gen that fear in the genetics of the parent was passed down to the child. So now the child has um, the the child m mice, you know, now has you know, some type of disassociation with the cheese where they don't like cheese or they won't go with I the cheese. I heard that fear lasts for 17 generations. Yeah, and so it's the same thing for as far as black men and black women with slavery. That plays a big part in it because you have a lot of these uh, traumas that have came from slavery, like with butt breaking and with, um, you know, uh, taking the father away and not allowing the father to be with the family because they were traded off to a to another plantation or whatever. So you have these traits that are instilled in people from epigenetics and they don't even know why they're reacting in a way that they're reacting. It's so, it's so much, it's like a basic instinct. And along with not acknowledging that the trauma exists, because what I've what I've noticed from experience, personal experience, within the last four months, is that oh, a lot of the people who I interact with don't realize that this trauma is a real thing. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize it. They don't call it for what it is. They say, "What trauma did you have? Are you serious?" daddy dead at 1.5 mm -hmm. um, and so on you know every other every other person that I love died from their own out you know seeing people slotted in the middle of the street you think that that's normal no you've normalized it mm -hmm. this is trauma and it's not okay it's not acceptable but since we're black we're expected to just take it on as what it is and since we're black women we supposed to hold it on our shoulders and keep it pushing. And we all have a lot of healing to do. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you're uh, someone who's in the black community or not, I feel like every race and every person has had some type of trauma and some type of something that they're dealing from, um, that they're dealing with. Um, and we, we all have a, a lot of things that we need to heal from as a society. And in order to heal, um, no one is going to heal by pointing the finger at the woman or pointing the finger at the man. It's looking at yourself and mm -hmm. looking at, you know, um, what do I want? What do I need to improve on? What do yeah. I need to heal from? Not letting nobody determine that for you, but you knowing that yourself, you being in tune with yourself to, to know what resonates with you, to recognize your intuition. There's so many people mm -hmm. who don't know how to listen to their intuition, who don't, you know, know how to have that direct connection with God or with their higher self. And, you know, you you have to have that and you have to work on yourself and begin healing so that you can come and approach this situation with more love and with a more balanced mind. And if everyone collectively did that on their own, all men and all women, I feel like we could create that balance in our society. I don't think that it's just a collective thing on our own. I think it's a collective thing in our community that, you know, because look at me and you. You know, personally, we piggyback off of each other, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not just like if 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 it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have had the relationship that I have with God right now. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I trust you before I trust something that I didn't see because I've been seeing you since a youngin. you know. So how does that influence me? You know, and I think that that's a really 
a beneficial thing for us to be around like-minded people, you know, mm -hmm. to say if we are going to be, and, and you say too, we say everybody, but I don't say everybody because I'm black. <laughs> yeah. And everybody don't look at us and see everybody else. They look at us and see black, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't say, I don't include other people because I don't see many people including us, mm -hmm. you know, what is it? But then you are half breed too. I'm, I'm me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still so black, though. <laughs> definitely, because my mama is black as me. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't see that. I don't include other people because when I look at it, people witness us as being as at the bottom of the totem pole. They don't give us as much credit as we need to. But I, I hope to speak and give other people the notion that we need to give each other that validation so many people <laughs> have different experiences mm -hmm. and people speak from their experiences mm -hmm. and um you know some people they're just so caught up in their own little world they don't um look at other people's perspectives so i feel like if people have more sympathy and compassion for each other whether it be a man that's against a woman or colorism with a light-skinned person against a dark-skinned person. It's like, as long as you have compassion for that other person, that's all that matters. So, you know, like a man that feels like, oh, he hate all women because women just use him. Mm -hmm. You also need to understand the hurt that brought that woman what to that point. That brought it to that? On the other end, a man that's not there for the family, you have to understand what all contributed for that man to bring that man to that point. Um, and even with colorism, there's, you know, as a black person, whether you're light or dark, there are struggles that we both struggle with, you mm -hmm. know, like as um, a light skinned person, I will agree that there are certain light skinned privileges that light skinned people get versus, um, dark skinned people. But also it, it's with mixed people. It's like, we also feel like we don't fit in, in either group. You know, you have a group of black people that would be like, oh, well, you ain't really black. You have some white people. Oh, you ain't really white. You know, so everybody Especially has this generation. Every, yeah. And everybody this generation is crazy. They saying that because you light skin and so got soft care, you, you're not black. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. So you say my grandmother who gave, who literally produced me. Like she had sex with my grandfather in order to make sure my mother or my father was produced. And then you're saying that she's not responsible for that. It's really weird. But yeah. you say it all the time. You say, well, my mother is dark skinned. Nobody would ever know that by looking at you. But that's the time foolery. Yeah, I've had guys come to me and say like, oh, I like you, you cute. But, you know, I normally don't like dark skin girls. I'm hella offended at that point. Like, fuck you, motherfucker. My mother is dark. Mm -hmm. So what makes you think I'm not offended by that because I'm white? Dark and hella You got me so fucked up. Whoever think about that. Whoever is thinking like that, you come at me with that shit, you, you gonna get clowned straight up. Like, don't, don't come at me like, like that. And I feel like if every body had that camaraderie with other people you know and they had that togetherness and you uh the the people who are with that fuck shit wouldn't feel so comfortable to be with that fuck shit if everybody stood up and called people out on that shit like you wrong you wrong for that i, I hear people saying it like you know some of the people in our circle saying stuff like oh that black ass bitch hold on who are you talking to who are you talking to <laughs> You said that black ass bitch. That's what you meant. You said that her her complexion is not suitable for your liking. And why it had to be that black ass bitch? Why, why it can't be that bitch? Do you ever why say it can't be that? Do you ever say that light skin ass bitch? You know, do you ever say that straight hair ass bitch? <laughs> you know what no, I'm saying? you don't. You don't say you that. Don't. You never hear that. You know what I'm saying? But it's also, I do believe. Because Grandma Bobby always told me about how she had experiences. She your complexion, right? She never, she had experiences with people who treated her like she was less than because she wasn't good enough, because she wasn't dark enough. Her hair wasn't nappy enough, you know? But she's black. Both parents black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to stop focusing on why, why are we different and start focusing on how are we the same. At the end of the mm. day, we all are humans. 
you know, we all have blood. We all have the same organs. We all are striving to live our best lives. But are we? Well, I just have to be the pessimist. <laughs> Because I don't see that. I don't see that. I don't. See, okay, I well, may, may, maybe that last part is debatable. It. But at you know? the end of the day, we are more. I think alike we all want to be different. good people. Yeah. I think we all want to be likable, but I don't think we all understand what ways we can come together and be more cohesive and uh, grow. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that a lot of people think that it's a competition. Yeah, which brings and us back like, full no. circle to the beginning of the conversation That's to where the the it. battle of the sexes, men against, it's not no competition of men against women. We are mm -hmm. supposed to work together and yes. we cannot um, yes. reap the, the fruits of our labor until we get that. You know, it's mm -hmm. always going to be chaos. It's always going to be confusion. It's always going to be tension. How can you have a new human being if you don't have the opposite sex? Can you? Well, you know, they doing a lot with science and technology. But can you? They got to emulate whatever it is that's already been going on. <laughs> you can't. Don't let them you need a, fool an you. An X chromosome and a Y chromosome. <laughs> I said what I said. I said what I said and I mean what I mean. Right. The big contributing factor to all this is the music. Because um, I was watching this post on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Jess Hilarious made a post and it was so valid. She was basically saying... Um, you know, you have the Cardi B's and you have the city girls, like, um, the, what, what's the, um, the light skinned one and the city girls, what's, what's her name? I don't know her name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, hold on, Young Miami, boo. Yeah. Don't do my, <laughs> Young Miami. I like Mr. Young Miami. I like Lisa Young Miami. She okay. Of all of she okay. She She's okay. She's cute. For real. I, real I'm not, I don't want nobody to think I'm hating on her or anything, but y'all get y'all will get where I'm coming from in a second. What about it? So basically, Jess Hilarious was saying, um, you know, like you and Cardi B, y'all telling us, oh, rob these niggas, <laughs> work these niggas, do all this, but y'all got a man. Y'all, you, Cardi B has a husband. She has a baby daddy. I don't know if they married or not, or whatever. But mm -hmm. you know, it's like you, you do. Do you treat your man like that? Do you steal his money? Do you work him and be like, oh, I don't want you for nothing. Where my Birkin bag at? You know, that's not how anybody mm -hmm. is going to get a man. You're not you. You're you're encouraging us to live this lifestyle that you're not even living. Has and Beyonce he, ever told you to rob anybody? No, and, and these fake ass motherfucking thugs up on here. B, I ain't told you to do that shit. No, like that. I blame I blame y'all too, cause y'all y'all play a big ass part up in it. Y'all want to talk about killing people, hurting people, and when half y'all, first of all, ain't even about that life. Ice life told you, you know, left a bitch, kill a hoe, fucking nigga. All this, what is that this, about? this, 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 what you promoting? You know, but and and half of y'all ain't really rapping about uh, ain't really rapping about y'all real life and how y'all really are because if y'all was really living that life, you wouldn't be broadcasting. So that it. would be toxic masculinity, right? Part Over of it, asserting yeah. yourself in a situation that that's not even called. But for. they're they're encouraging all of these younger people that are listening to them to get into this lifestyle mm -hmm. that is going to promote them to be, be this gutter. thug that's going to get them dead or in jail and you have the women that's promoting the young girls to be hoes i was that's gonna ask you what does toxic femininity look like cousin it looks like Young Miami. I'm sorry, and it looks like Don't Cardi do B. Young Miami. I love Miami. I love uh, I love Cardi B. I like Lisa I love them Miami. as as human individuals, but mm. their music is the epitome but of they what got I'm the talking ring about. Leaders of it right now. Who the ringleader? Oh, they're it? they're not the only people, but they are big contributing factors. And and I'm not going to just blame it all on them. It's also the we've been listening it, to it though because I parents, was off Trina early on. Right, but the, I, before I was ten, I was listening to Trina, Miss Trina, the bed ringer. Don't ever forget it. She was the beginning you of all learn, of this whole shit. You didn't learn about sex. I love, I love Trina. From your mama, you learned about sex from Little Wayne, Trina. You know, hot boys. You learned about all that from 
these people who told you drop it like it's hot. Yeah, but that don't make truth. that don't make it right either. I I love the little Kims and they the Trinas and either. all of that, but you know they kind of like started all of this off, which it's over. which is not which is not good for our children to be listening to. And and the I don't want to one hundred percent blame them. Parents also have to take accountability. Just yesterday. I seen a lady with her kids all in her car and, and mm -hmm. this girl hanging all out the window like, get that bread, get that head, and leave. Y'all don't... Am I the only person that sees something wrong with that? You're not the that? only person who sees it because I see it too. I'm going to tell you this. Little cousin said, body, yaddy, 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 <laughs> big titties, little waist. Now, titties is about as flat as this goddamn titties. <laughs> <laughs> She said, body at big titty, little waist. But she about five years old. What's that about, parents? What is that about when your child is speaking those things into existence and she ain't had that experience but yet? You know, what is that about? Yeah, and I'm not going to act like I'm holier than thou. I remember when I was young and I remember being was high little. boys. I was driving yeah. like it's high no. and I was twerking. Oh, I was in my mama house Pussy saying, ain't no down. nigga like the one I got. No, no and she thing. beat my ass like you been. And I'm like, what did I do? I was just singing a song that I heard on it's the radio. It's never the kid's fault, but it is the parent's responsibility in order to instruct yeah. a child. And, and I want to say this to y'all with as much love as possible. I'm not trying to get on y'all for being a parent. I'm going to keep it real. I don't have no kids of my own. However, what right is right and what's wrong is wrong. You, It's a time and a place. I understand y'all got to live y'all life. Y'all want to listen to the music that y'all want to listen to. But knowing that your kids are digesting this and it's having some type of effect on them, you can't wait till you're not around your kid mm. to play that. And like, can we get some type of petition or some type of act or, or some type of government law passed to where the mass media um, has some type of responsibility to keep the kids safe like I is there a radio station that we can start where I can turn it on with my nieces and nephews in the car and not have to worry about talking about get the bread get the head and so leave? Dolores Tucker I want to say this to you because you Dolores Tucker right now remember I want to say short dog so bad but it's too short I mean Tupac I was saying that all day right so Tupac, he said, Dolores Tucker, you a fake to me. You know, instead of trying to help a brother, you trying to take his jigs. But the reality is she was really on to something. She felt like the music that they were producing was putting out a negative force in our communities and it was hindering us more than it was helping us. Right. It's saying the same thing that you said and it's the same thing that I see all the time. I don't say it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I do really believe with all my with all my gut that if we do not begin to censor what's going on with these kids, they will get tossed by the wayside. Right. They will think that these things is okay. They will think that prostitution is okay. They will think that stripping is okay. If you get any stripper lined up, they're not going to tell you that this is the life. They're going to tell you, no, I'm lonely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't live a normal lifestyle. If they tell and you I the wish truth, I could. If they telling you the truth. But when you look at them, look at the ones who have been online and who have been in the public eye, and they're telling you. Most of those people that's most of those these young girls that's glorifying that haven't been around long enough to see the ugly side of it. No, or are they I being think, paid to not tell the that, ugly side of it? I think that it. they get the finances that they aspire to have because it's a business. Let's not disregard that mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying it is a business yeah and i don't think it's anything wrong with you know if you're of age and you want to make that decision that that's the type of life that you want to live everybody has free we not will give that to 10 year old girls because like i said uh my superhero was trina nigga in the back of the in the back of the in the back of the truck when I'm dead ass drunk, but I don't get high though. I never <laughs> took it. I often try it, but I pass. And from what I heard, it ain't bad. I'm a curious <laughs> bitch. <laughs> don't play with me and y'all know the rest of it. We shouldn't know that at 10 years old. At 10 years old, that's not appropriate. <laughs> that's not appropriate. It's not even appropriate at 20, but I'm gonna, you know, lay low with that.
seriously. You yeah, know? That, that that that's a problem. That's a major, major problem. But that's our culture. Then you want to beat your child ass when they pop in their booty a little hard. Now, my mama they didn't allow something? me to listen to that. I heard it from your cousin mama. I ain't going to say no names. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say that because it was allowed. You get what I'm saying? My mother never allowed me to listen to that stuff. My mama always encouraged me to not listen to this stuff. What I heard from my mama was Maze Frankie Beverly, you know? Mm -hmm. I heard Isley Brothers all encouraging me to be a strong, black, productive citizen, mm -hmm. despite of the odds. Mm -hmm. Not to be a prostitute, not to be a whore, not to be a fuck buddy, you know? But if, if I listen to my very great... Uh, one of my favorites, which is Lil Wayne, I think can't nobody out rap them. <laughs> um, then it's dropping it like it's hot. You right. know, that's what you do, twerk. And it's nothing wrong with making these uh, musics for the adults, but we have Please to don't stop making twerk music. We we have to be um very conscious of the platforms and how it's being sent out mm -hmm. to the society you know for example with the film industry and um t in the tv industry i don't feel like it's right for them to have all of these sexual scenes on there whether it be homosexual mm -hmm. scenes girl on girl boy on boy or whether it just be a man and a woman a kid i i a kid should not be able to turn on a show that comes on at eight o'clock at night on primetime TV and see two people humping and bumping and grinding on each other and having soft porn. Like and the it, question it's not is, necessary. do you want kids screwing? It's not even necessary to tell the story. I remember when I was younger, I would see little things, people with kids, mm -hmm. they go into the back room, they close the door. All the wrong people know what's happening. It's not necessary for every storyline and every movie to have all these sex scenes. Y'all just living out y'all fantasies at this point. All these production and agencies at this point, and these really directors, the kids, and they trying to corrupt. Them. Yeah, all these, Let's all these, honest. all these production agencies and these directors. Y'all, y'all just wanting to see some porn. I feel like in in front of y'all face, and y'all don't care. Like y'all want to push this out and over sexualize the um the society. You know. Now, how does this tie? into masculinity and femininity i feel like all of that contributes to being unbalanced um, because you have the um Education. you have the songs you have the media and you have the educational system that pushes all of these unhealthy ideologies and ways of thinking like, oh, well, just just work a nigga. Get the bread, get the head and leave. You planting those seeds into you don't need a family. minds. You, you don't need a family. Right. So if you don't need you a don't have to love if you don't need a family, you don't need to be what next comes? That toss that a woman having that toss toxic masculinity traits oh well fuck, like a, fuck a dude i don't need a dude i could do whatever and 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 you know it it, it all holds like in slavery yeah that even though this man is fucking me all willy-nilly i don't have no feelings because they just gonna fuck me and do what they want to do anyway don't you believe that megan shit she ain't cool <laughs> We've been trained. We have to train ourselves in order to rethink what it is that we're going through because we have been conditioned to think that we're less than. You can know who exactly who you is because God told you who you is from the beginning before you could even articulate it. Mm -hmm. You knew who you were. Mm -hmm. But something about it, you got sucked in because of your life experiences that taught you Nah, I don't believe that. You ain't shit. You know? You are less than. You are less than those people around you. You do need those people. You know? But what's going to pull us through? Constantly fighting them battles. You know? Somebody once said to me, though, why does it always have to be a fight? I'm like, well, to sum it up for me, I'm a Negro. That's what it comes to in my mind because early on, for me, I've always been this black. It's different. It's different. People don't want to acknowledge it, but it's different. You know, first grade, I saw it. When the teacher left me on the porch, you know, bitter. 32. 
Yeah, because they taught, they treated me different, you know? But the reality is, originally, I knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I don't let, I don't lose sight of it. Stop anybody, letting the media dictate what it is that you think and what you believe in, too. Because a lot of the times you don't realize that that's a lot of philosophical um manipulation is going on too and you know you're seeing yeah you're seeing all these things like of course if i tell you something a hundred times next thing you know that's in your mind mm -hmm. you know but take away i would say my advice to the people that i know and love is turn everything off turn everything off um and get secure with the spirit you know and regardless of how you look at the spirit um if that be you believing in jesus christ which i promote Mm -hmm. I'll promote it. Um, any form of spirit that you believe in, if it's for you, it will it will help you. It will influence you to move forward towards a positive light. Okay, so uh, just be tuned. Don't don't feel like you need to be obligated because other people believe in something. Or because um, it helps somebody else out. No, do it for yourself. No, within without a shadow of a doubt that this particular thing has helped you um, along the way. That when you had a question, when you had a curiosity, when you asked, that it was answered to you. Yeah, so I hope this was an eye-opener for you guys. I hope um, some of you were able to... Um, take away some good gems from this conversation and make sure you stay tuned of more of what I said, what I said with Sierra and Alicia. I said what I said and I meant that. Don't test me because it's what it is. <laughs> See you next time. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye.